for people just coming to the story, we know conservative landowners, uh, just landowners period, are affected, but Native Americans are also upset about this, citing um, parts of the Big Bend uh, region being sacred to them. Can you kind of talk about uh, the Big Bend region and uh, why Native Americans are bothered by the pipeline? Sure. The uh, In this part of Texas, there is a, a Native indigenous people who are called the Humano. Um, they intermarried and intermingled with uh, tribes from further north, including the Apaches and Cherokee and various other, other northern tribes. They're not federally recognized in this area. So their, their right to exist, if you wish, has been denied by the federal government. And they're fighting a continued fight uh, to be federally recognized as tribal entities with the according sovereign authority that they should have. Not that you're an indigenous expert, but why aren't, why aren't they recognized versus Standing Rock Sioux Tribe that's recognized? Uh, for, I'll, I'll shorten this. There's a thing called the Dawes Act that you should go look into uh, where hundreds of tribes were denied their right to exist because of the United States and the Dawes Act. Uh, so that's the principal underlying reason. Uh, the pipeline itself crosses through an area that's been inhabited for thousands of years by those indigenous people. Uh, it crossed over, for example, a site at Trap Springs that was more than 5,000 years old that was eradicated, obliterated off the face of the earth by the construction activity. And that site density is about, it's estimated to be one to two sites in every five linear miles. And so they just mowed over it and, and bulldozed it. So that is cultural heritage that is lost forever, and a lot of it we may never even know about because of the nature of this construction and the, the fact that it crosses private land. And uh, lastly, you've kind of, the last few years, this has been, you know, your life. Uh, this, this pipeline, uh, fighting against it, I know you mentioned land on, landowners you've dealt with. It's opened, opened their eyes. Can you talk about for you personally, uh, you know? Uh, dealing with this and learning everything you've learned, uh, how's this kind of opened your eyes and you know maybe changed your views a little bit? My eyes were open, honestly, going into it. I came from this industry, so I knew exactly what was going to happen here. Yeah, I totally buried the lead. You you worked in the oil and gas industry, so I I knew exactly what was going to happen down to every last detail. And I love this place, and I wasn't going to stand up and let it happen without a fight. What uh what did you do in the oil and gas industry? Uh, work for an industry that did this kind of activity, so oil and gas construction for pipelines, compression stations, uh, processing equipment like natural gas plants, that kind of thing. And uh, do you, like uh, I spoke with people in North Dakota, they kind of said, you know, if you if this pipeline goes through under a, a main water source for 18 million people, you know, what's next? Are they going to route it through a daycare center? Uh, what do you think the ramifications are uh, for this? Do you think it's kind of you know, open season now, uh, if, if they have a successful test case here in terms of uh, seizing private land? One pipeline leads to another. So this is the first of what will likely be many pipelines that try to pass this region, even some down this same route. We already see large-scale extraction activity developing to our north, just a few miles from here. We know it's possible further south into what's called the Hovey Channel and the Marfa Basin. So we see this coming, and it's one of many things that include uh, the extraction activity of oil and gas, large-scale water mining, which we can't stand in this region. I'd like to drink water. I don't know about you. Um, we are threatened by at least one high-level radioactive nuclear waste storage site uh, just a few miles from here. A transportation corridor that aims to eventually put a six-lane highway through here to Mexico to Topolobampo. So it just never ends. We're, we're not short of joy here. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah.